Hi everyone, welcome to Ancients. In this video, we're going to see how a three-phase alternator turns simple rotation into AC power. We'll build the machine step-by-step -step and watch the physics come alive. Alternators are critical for converting mechanical energy into stable AC electricity, enabling everything from vehicle charging systems to standby generators that keep essential services running during outages. Before we explore the alternator, let's understand fundamental laws of electromagnetism that make it all possible. When electric current flows through any conductor, it creates a magnetic field around that conductor. When a magnetic field around a coil of wire changes in strength or direction, it induces an electric current in that coil. This reciprocal relationship between electricity and magnetism is the foundation of all electrical generators. Let's begin building our alternator with the stator, the stationary outer structure. Inside the stator, we'll place a single-phase coil made of copper wire wound through slots in the iron core. This coil has two terminals where we'll collect our generated electricity. The coil consists of multiple turns of insulated copper wire, and as magnetic fields cut through these conductors, they'll generate the voltage. Now let's introduce the rotor. We'll start with two adjacent salient poles, projecting electromagnets that form the foundation of our magnetic field generation. Each pole has a concentrated field winding wrapped around it connected in series. When we send DC current through these windings, they become powerful electromagnets. Here's where the clock rule becomes crucial. If current flows clockwise around the first pole when viewed from the end, it creates a south pole. The current then continues to the second pole, where it flows counterclockwise, creating a north pole. This series connection of field windings is essential. It ensures that adjacent poles always have opposite polarity. As our two-pole rotor spins, the single stator coil experiences alternating magnetic fields. As the north pole passes our stator coil, induced voltage rises to its positive peak. As the rotor continues and the south pole approaches, voltage decreases, crosses zero, and reaches a negative peak. Now let's expand to our actual design a eight-pole rotor. Around the circumference, we have eight salient poles, each with its own concentrated field winding. All these windings connect in series, carrying the same DC current. Following the clock rule, the winding direction alternates around the rotor. This creates four north poles and four south poles alternately distributed evenly around the rotor. With our eight-pole rotor spinning, coil now experiences four complete flux reversals as all eight poles pass by. Look at the voltage graph. Four complete sine wave cycles occur during one mechanical revolution of the rotor. This means our alternator generates four times higher electrical frequency than a two-pole machine running at the same speed. The required rotational speed for any alternator is determined by the relationship. N equals 120F slash P. For our eight-pole alternator generating standard 50 Hz electricity, we get 750 RPM. To create the three-phase power, we need three identical stator coil groups positioned 120 degrees apart around the stator circumference. Each coil group, let's call them phase A, phase B, and phase C, has the same construction and the same number of turns. As our eight-pole rotor rotates, phase A experiences peak magnetic flux first. Exactly 120 degrees later phase B reaches its peak flux. Another 120 degrees later, Phase C hits its maximum. Watch the three voltage graphs. Phase A generates its sine wave first, Phase B follows 120 degrees behind, and Phase C trails by another 120 degrees. These three sinusoidal voltages have identical amplitude and frequency but are perfectly offset in time. This creates balanced three-phase power. The sum of the three voltages always equals zero, providing smooth, constant power delivery with minimal vibration. In a three-phase alternator, the three-phase winding free ends are brought out as the line terminals and other ends of the three-phase windings are connected to one common node called the star or neutral point. The joined common ends form the neutral point N. Thus, the output is four wires, L1, L2, L3, and N. To reduce eddy currents, both our stator and rotor cores are constructed from hundreds of thin steel laminations each typically 0.5 millimeters thick. 
These laminated sheets are stacked together and insulated from each other with thin coatings of varnish or oxide. The laminations break up these current paths. Eddy currents can't flow between the insulated sheets, dramatically reducing power losses and keeping our alternator cool and efficient. Our alternator is known as shunt self-excited because it generates its own field current for armature coils without requiring any external DC source. At the heart of the system lies the automatic voltage regulator, AVR, which connects to the main output terminals and continuously monitors the generated voltage. Inside the AVR, rectifier diodes convert the stator's AC voltage into steady DC current, which is essential for creating stable magnetic poles in the rotor field windings. Converted DC current travels to the rotating rotor windings via slip rings, conductive rings mounted on the shaft, and carbon brushes that maintain constant contact with those rings as they spin. Although the system is fully autonomous once running, a unique startup challenge arises. With no external source, the alternator must rely on residual magnetism, a tiny remnant magnetic field in the iron cores of the field windings. When the rotor begins turning, this weak residual field cuts through the stator windings, inducing a small initial voltage. That voltage, though minimal, feeds back through the AVR to the field windings, thereby amplifying the magnetic field. As the field strengthens, the generated voltage increases, creating a bootstrap effect that rapidly builds to full rated voltage. If residual magnetism is lost due to prolonged inactivity, demagnetizing influences, or component replacement, the alternator may fail to build up voltage. In such cases, a short burst of external DC excitation is applied to restore residual flux and enable normal self-excitation. While brush DC excitation systems have served us for decades, they come with significant drawbacks that impact both reliability and operational costs. The fundamental issue lies in the mechanical contact between carbon brushes and slip rings. As these components slide against each other during operation, they create inevitable wear that demands constant attention. This wear process generates carbon dust that contaminates the electrical environment, degrading insulation and requiring frequent cleaning to maintain safe operation. This is precisely why modern alternators have overwhelmingly adopted brushless shunt excitation systems by eliminating brushes and slip rings entirely. In our next video, we'll explore the inner workings of brushless self-excitation systems. Making these videos takes a lot of effort, so if you found this one helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.